my name is Patricia Medici. I'm from Brazil. I'm a Brazilian conservation biologist. I, I coordinate this program called the Lowland Tapir Conservation Initiative in Brazil. It's part of this organization called IPE, Instituto de Pesquisas Ecológicas, and I'm the chair of the IUCN SSC Tapir Specialist Group. I wanted to work with species conservation. That was always my passion. Uh, and I wanted to work with an animal that was uh, very little known about uh, um, and the tapers were perfect. They were very difficult to study, um, nocturnal, solitary, um, uh, you have to rely on indirect methods to work with them, um, uh, you have to work during the night, so it, it's very difficult, so uh, 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 I thought that I could make a, a real contribution uh, to conservation working with tapers. I, I love baby tapers. Uh, it's, 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 it's the little watermelon. It's, it's by far the cutest animal offspring in the animal kingdom. There's no discussion about that. So whenever we're out there in the field and we see a baby taper, it's like, it's, uh, I freak out a little bit. So. Tapers have a, a very long gestation period, 13, 14 months. It's a single baby, a single watermelon is born. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, There is a, a very high rate of mortality uh, for baby tapers. So uh, there's predation, there's disease, there's uh, lots of risks out there. Uh, when they survive, they, they usually spend about a year and a half with the female learning. Um, and then they, they disperse um, and they go find their own their own territory. Uh, tapers are pretty much solitary. I love the field component of the work I do. Uh, there's several components, but my passion is usually, it's, it's always in the field. I, I like to be there, I, I like to be catching tapers, anesthetizing them, radio coloring them, that's, that's what energizes me. Uh, the species I work with, uh, the lowland taper, is distributed throughout South America, 11 different countries, 21 different ecoregions, so we don't really have an estimate oh, of okay. how many animals we have uh, in the wild. Uh, okay. It would be very difficult to, to get that number. One of the components of the work we do, uh, uh, the main core of the work we do is research. Uh, we strongly believe that we need that scientific data to be able to develop strategies for the conservation of tapers in the wild. And we work in different biomes in Brazil, Atlantic Forest, Pantanal, Cerrado and the Amazon. And we're dealing with different threats in different biomes. And uh, we're collecting scientific data in each one of these different biomes and we're going to use those uh, specific uh, 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 data sets to develop strategies for, for the conservation of tapers in each one of these different biomes. Um, and, uh, and the main thing here is to uh, evaluate, to, to, to assess the viability of taper populations in these different sites where we're working. Uh, and that's where we need uh, the data. We need the life table parameters to be able to model those populations and estimate their probability of extinction, their you know, maintenance of genetic diversity, all those estimates we do through modeling. I can't stress enough how useful it's been for us, for the taper conservation community, to be able to use uh, the data from, from the captive data, uh, taper data sets. It's been extremely useful to us. It helped us uh, develop the first baseline models for, okay. for Vortex, for okay. PVA. We carried out uh, PHVA workshops for the four taper species and, uh, and uh, population modeling was part of each one of those workshops and we needed to develop the life, to, to compile the life table mm -hmm. parameters for modeling. Um, so, uh, still bookkeepers um, in the US, uh, in Europe, uh, in Latin America helped us collect that data from, from the captive uh, data sets for, for the PHVAs. I started this career um, thinking that I would spend 100% of my time in the field, right? Because that's, that's where my passion is, that's yeah. what I like to do. Yeah. But then when you work with conservation, it, it doesn't matter for how long, at some point you realize that yeah, it's not gonna happen, that you know you have to do uh, uh, many other things that you're actually not prepared to do. So right. Things like raising funds, uh, right. communicating the work you do to the general public, mm -hmm. um, uh, public speaking, and uh, uh, things that uh, you don't learn when you go to college. Uh, but then all of a sudden you have to do all of that. Um, and uh, you know, I'm actually a very shy person, very extremely shy person. And so, uh, speaking in public and uh, and 
communicating it's it's a struggle to me and uh, not many people notice that um, mm -hmm. but yes it's very very difficult for me to do that 